Our 2013 CES coverage is powered by Ford. Go further. For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen here at CES 2013, checking out the latest in wireless docking. How are you, Jorge? Good. How are you? So wireless docking, this is kind of a new technology. Explain to me, what is it in this, uh, in, in this technology that allows us to be able to, what, extend our display, our, our I.O., our USB, everything? So this is a new technology. It's called 802.11 AD. can run up to 5 gigabits per second. And basically, we are connecting the computer to that hub, and everything is done wirelessly. So basically, all the I.O. on the computer can be connected on the hub and then wirelessly connect the hub into the computer. That is so cool. Uh, tell me, what you guys have, uh, uh, Wilocity has teamed up with Qualcomm Atheros. You guys have put together uh, some chips here. What is it uh, about this chip that allows us to do that with our uh, docking station over here? So basically what we do is we have a one module that has the 11N or 11AC and 11AD technology in the same module. So basically you can work at 2.4, 5, and 60 gigahertz. So for this docking solution, we are using the 60 gigahertz, the five gigabits per second. And of course, for other, other uh, solutions, we are using just regular Wi-Fi. So our audience is probably very familiar with uh, 802.11 B, G, N, A, C. Uh, tell us about AD, if they're not familiar with the 60 gigahertz stuff. What are kind of the throughputs, the the uh, caveats that we have in that case, and things of that nature? So uh, 802.11 AD is the first time that we moved to a new frequency band. So instead of using 2.4 and 5, we moved to 60. Now, the bandwidth that we have in 60 is much, much higher. So instead of 20, 40, or even 80 megahertz, we are talking about uh, 1.7 gigahertz. So then the throughput, of course, goes way, way over what you can get in 2.4 or 5. The spec itself, the protocol is pretty much, it's very similar. It's not the same, but it's similar. There are some changes at the Mac level, but it's pretty much comparable. So with over a gigahertz of bandwidth in the 60 megahertz spectrum, uh, what kind of throughput can we expect to do? Uh, do you know what kind of the, um, you know, the, the regulations are on the, the wattage that we can actually use with this and what kind of range we can expect? So we are talking about, in the first generation, almost five gigabits per second. The spec gets up to almost seven gigabits per second. In terms of um, output power, you can get to 43 dBm EIRP. It's like 20 watts. So I think it's more than enough. In terms of range, uh, the higher you go in frequency, so walls will become a blockage for the signal. So that's why we call, we'll usually talk about in-room coverage. But in terms of range, you can get to 30, even 50 meters without any problem, but as long as you have, you are inside the same room. So you say that things change on the Mac level, but for the most part, is this just not an extension of the existing IEEE uh, 802.11 spec? Do we see the same kinds of things when it comes to you know management frames and control frames and things of that nature? Yeah, the main, the main change I would say is that when you go to higher frequencies, the antennas go much, much slow, smaller so that allows us to use an array of antennas. So in order to overcome that physical challenges that 60 gigahertz impose, we are using beam forming. So we are able to steer the beam and overcome obstacles by just reflecting into walls or ceiling or anything else. So there is a piece of the protocol that is related to beam forming, how to do the training, how to track the other side, etc. that this is kind of new. And is the multiplexing technology kind of the same stuff that we've seen in the last two generations of Wi-Fi, the uh, orthogonal frequency stuff? Yeah, so there are two modes, same as what it was 11B. Uh, so you have single carrier mode, there is an OFDM mode, and it's up to the implementation of the, the different chipsets. So let's talk about the implementation, because what I find fascinating about this is, okay, so you've got a setup here with this new Dell Latitude that's launching today, and, uh, and you've got it wirelessly synced with your reference design uh, hub over here. What is it that the operating system is going to need to know in order to work with this technology? So in this case, we are talking about the wireless bus extension. This is pretty much wireless PCI Express. So the system is connecting to a bunch of controllers that are on the other side. We don't need anything. As long as the OS supports PCI Express, 
we appear to the system as a PCI Express switch. Any OS that supports PCI Express has a PCI Express switch driver, bridges driver, so we don't need anything. We do have our own driver just for management, to establish the connection, to check, debug, to configure the cards, of course, but for the data transfer, it's completely agnostic. We just use, so it will work on Linux, it will work on Mac OS, it will work, of course, on Windows, etc. So that's exactly what I was going to ask. If this is, in fact, just an extension of my existing bus, and the operating system is none the wiser, obviously, it needs to be able to speak to that bus. Uh, traditionally, Atheros, or now Qualcomm Atheros, has been very uh, supportive of the open source community. With Wilocity now part of the picture, is that going to continue? And do you have the same kind of abilities as you do with previous generations of like Atheros gear, you know, your, your nine, uh, ATH 5K, ATH 9K gear, where you can do the promiscuous mode and all of those other uh, fun things with Wi-Fi, uh, does that change when we start getting into 802.11 AD? No, it doesn't change. Uh, there are two modes of operation for this chipset. One is the wireless bus extension, that is the wireless PCI Express. The other one is networking. It's Wi-Fi over 60 gigahertz. And for that case, the drivers are already in the mainstream Linux community, so every, anybody can go there and look what's going on there. That would be awesome. I can't wait to get my LAN party action on with the little 802.11 AD. Uh, where can I find this as a consumer? Am I just going to have to wait for this to be embedded in uh, my device, or can I actually pick this up off the shelf? So right now, these are going into computers. Uh, we are working with a couple of uh, ODMs in Taiwan that they are, they are basically fabricating this, these boards. Um, I don't think that right now they are available in DigiKey or any of those places. I assume it will be shortly available there also. Awesome. This is so great. Thank you so much, Jorge. I really appreciate it. For continued coverage of all things CES 2013, be sure to head over to revision3.com. NPR has a great public radio app that is compatible with Ford Sync AppLink. This means that when you're in your car and you're on the go and you don't want to touch your phone, you don't have to. You have all your favorite playlists, all your favorite NPR shows right on your phone, ready for voice commands. Hourly News. I'm Louise Schiavone. House Republican leaders are challenging So the if you want to listen to your favorite shows like Morning Edition and All Things Considered, you just have them right there in your new Ford car. Thank you again to Ford for sponsoring this Hack 5 CES special.